Well, you can still hear me, but now there's a red light on that indicates that it's on. So, Linda knows things. <laughs> Linda is carrying this church on her shoulders. Thank you very much. Well, it's, it's true. Uh, so, welcome to the United Church of Fayetteville. This is a wonderful, wonderful church family, and I am so proud and honored to be a part of it. Let us worship the Lord. People of God, we have wonderful stories to tell, glorious songs to sing, and good news to share. On this joyous morning, we retell the story of the birth of our Lord, laying it alongside other stories of fiction and truth in our lives and in the world, that we might find this joy all year long. Come, all ye faithful. Let us worship the Lord.
so blessed to have Sarah at the piano. Please join me in our litany of our uh, Christmas tide litany. Oh, sing to God a new song. Sing to God all the earth. We sing of light that shines in the darkness and joy that comes from promises fulfilled. Declare the marvelous works of God among all people. Worship the God of faithfulness and mercy. Through our deeds, we proclaim the works of God. And by our mercy and forgiveness, we show the world the Lord of love. We gather to greet the Prince of Peace, born for God's rule of justice and righteousness. Citizens of God's reign, we do the things that make for peace and are agents of God's justice for those who need human advocates. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice for the fulfillment of hope that comes in Christ. Christ's body on earth, we commit ourselves to proclaiming the good news and acting for the sake of his hope. As we dedicate our offerings of thanksgiving and praise, let us hear these words from Scripture. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angels before he was conceived in the womb. When the time came for their purification according to the laws of Mo Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Wondrous God, we are laden with gifts of joy, mercy, and love that come to us this Christmas time. We are grateful that you have not given us this bounty for ourselves alone, but give us reason and purpose to share. Bless the gifts we bring to your house this day, which we offer from our hearts. Fill them and us 
that all these things may flow out into the world on singing joyful feet to every place where there is need and pain. We serve and pray in the name of your Son. Amen. Today's Gospel reading is from Luke, first chapter, 26 through 35. God's word comes to us this day from the gospel. Let us listen. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by, this, by these words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be? I am a virgin. And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of Most High will overshadow you. And therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed her.
God's word to us continues from the Gospel of Luke. Let us hear God's word for us on this time and place. Luke writes, In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what they had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. God always blesses the reading, the hearing, and the living of the Holy Word. I suspect that we're like most Christians at this time of year, most Christians in the world. We like to think that 2,000 years of hindsight gave us, gives us vision to see God's Savior in whatever form God might send, whenever God might send one. So we think that we are more like the shepherds rushing to see the baby than the innkeeper who missed an opportunity. We like to think that we're singing with angels and that we would make room in the inn of our hearts and lives for a God who can come and does come unexpectedly at any time of the day or night, at any time of the year. I suspect we are like most Christians at this time of the year. Today, I'd like to tell a story about someone who is like us. Her name is Lila. She is an average Christian woman. Perhaps in some ways, she is more than average. Her church attendance is pretty good, maybe even better than most. She even comes to church on the Sunday after Christmas. She brings her family on holidays and guests when they are in town. She does hate to miss a Sunday morning. She likes the music, stays awake during the sermons, and helps occasionally with fellowship and greeting at the doors. 
Lila doesn't agree with everyone else's religious ideas but all the time, but she has a live and let live attitude. She thinks she's a pretty good person, and she's right, about average. And while she doesn't think she's really, really smart, this time of year, listening to all the readings of the prophets, hearing about the signs of something, of the coming of God's promise, she finds herself thinking, like many of us do, that unlike an innkeeper from long ago, she'd be smart enough to recognize the baby Jesus when he showed up. Lila's, Lila is pretty much like we are. Around this time of year, we are alike in other ways. Her pre-holiday list frightened her as it just grew and grew. It grew right out of control. She never did get everything done let alone what she had on her list for the new year. She hasn't even begun that yet. So on this first Sunday after Christmas, she was glad to know that they would be getting out of church a little bit early, and we will, because it gave her a chance to do some of the, her post-Christmas shopping before crowds hit the stores. Snow was predicted, so she set the alarm for a little earlier than usual. With a sigh, she got out the snow shovel and cleared the driveway and the sidewalks yet again. She was almost finished when in the dim light, she saw a man come down the street walking his dog. She didn't know his name, but she saw him almost every day. As the man drew closer, Lila saw that his, her, his eyes were watering from the cold. A little closer and Lila was pretty sure he was crying. What's the matter? Can I help? The man looked a little startled, maybe because Lila spoke to him instead of just waving as she did most mornings. The man said, no, not really. There's nothing to be done. I just got a phone call from my daughter. They thought my grandson had the flu, but now it might be something much more serious. We'll have to wait until after the holidays for the results of the biopsy. Lila wasn't sure what to say. And she said, my church prays for people. What's your grandson's name? I'll ask for prayers. Oh, will you? It's Benjamin. His name is Benjamin. Lila said, and your name? What's your name? We'll pray for you too. Francis. Lila, ra Lila rather impulsively gave Francis a hug as he headed on his way with his dog. She did get out of church early. Everyone did. And after church, the door was blocked by an older man balanced on a four-footed cane as he waited for his son, who came to town for Christmas, to come around with the car. She tapped her foot impatiently, her extra time ticking away. Finally, the son pulled up. The man proudly said, Lila, let me introduce you to my son, Grant. But she didn't hear him or see the crestfallen look on his face because she had shot through the open space the minute he created it and headed to the parking lot at her very first chance. She scraped her car windows and headed toward the grocery. The snow was blowing and the road was icy. She found herself trapped behind a car going really slowly, at least 15 miles below the speed limit. More of her precious time was being wasted, and just as the light turned yellow, she blasted her horn and shot around the driver. In her rearview mirror, she saw the stricken face of the white-haired driver, and for a moment she felt guilty. But then she thought, honestly, if you were afraid to drive, why did you go out? As she crossed the snow-blown parking lot, she saw a little girl clinging to her mother's hand. She was crying and asking her mother to give her some money for the man with the red kettle who was still out. It had been a slow season. Lila could see from the way they were dressed and the tired look around the mother's eyes that they probably needed something from the kettle more than they might have had something to put in it. Without saying anything, Lila took all the change out of her coat pockets and placed it in the little girl's mittened hands. She smiled as she heard the plinking sounds of each coin dropped into the bucket by the giggling little girl. Her smile faded pretty quickly as she realized that the store had reorganized all its stock for its after-holiday sales. 
For people who were in the business of selling things, they certainly made it hard on anyone who wanted to find something to buy. Her mood didn't improve when she got to the register, where they, of course, had a trainee working. And apparently the customer in front of her had failed either reading or math, as she exceeded the express limit line by about 15 items. Lila rolled her eyes as the cashier called over some help from the service desk. In halting English, the customer in front of her asked for help deciding which items she could purchase with food stamps. The manager respectfully helped her finish her transaction. Lila calmed down. When it was her turn, she said to the cashier, I'm sorry I was impatient. It's hard to know who needs help or who is making an honest mistake and who is just taking advantage of ignoring the rules. Finally home, she sorted the mail she'd let pile up in the last few days and tossed unopened what was an obvious Christmas card because she didn't recognize the sender. It was probably some sales or slick donation appeal. Lila never knew an old friend had remarried and moved back to town. She spent the rest of the afternoon putting away gifts and recycling paper and boxes. She ignored the phone because she didn't have time for idle chatter with everything she had to do. She worked steadily. Stretching, she smiled, kind of smugly actually, because she thought she would be ready to go back to work tomorrow and still come home to a clean house ready for the new year. And all of a sudden, she remembered that when she, they had asked for prayer concerns in church that morning, she hadn't mentioned Benjamin and Francis. Those prayer concerns always took a long time and she'd pulled out her to-do list to double check. She realized I wasn't paying attention. I'll call the office tomorrow and add them to the prayer list, and she would. But for the rest of the evening, the words that echoed in her head weren't the lyrics of the lovely carols they had sung all season. Instead, the refrain in her head was, I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't paying attention. Lila mentally reran her day, and she figured she'd been paying attention about one time in three. About average for her, she decided. Maybe about average for most people. So Lila finally understood how the innkeeper could have missed it. Maybe he was just average, and that was one of the times he wasn't paying attention. And she decided right there and then she was gonna bring her average up. She decided she was going to practice all year long and not just in the Christmas season because the wonderful thing about this baby and this Christmas story was that it is never too late to let God into your life again and again and again, if only we pay attention.
our prayers for the world this morning are responsive, and I invite you to join in praying, Lord, hear our prayer in response to each petition. Let us pray. Most holy God, like your servants of every age, we have seen the glory of your wonders and the salvation of all flesh, which you have prepared for all peoples. This day especially, we pray for your whole world, for those who are sick and in need of healing. Lord, for those who are grieving or lonely, Lord, hear our prayer. For the hungry, the poor, and the homeless. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in need of work, dignity, and hope. Lord, hear our prayer. For places where natural disasters have destroyed homes and lives. for places where power is misused, for the leaders of our city, nation, and world, for places where peace has not yet come, for your church in every place, for the earth. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, do hear our prayers and grant us the grace to work for that for which we pray. With these people here and with these words, with people around the world, the prayer your son taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen.
God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.